Good afternoon and welcome to the 2017 Honors College Medallion Ceremony. It is my great pleasure now to introduce you to the Dean of the Honors College, Dr. Rajani Shrikath. Please welcome her. Good afternoon, everybody. It's so wonderful to see such a full room. It uh, makes my heart sing, and I know you're very happy to be here, too. Graduates, you know, it's always mixed feelings to be up here, to both congratulate you and to sort of bid you goodbye. Occasionally, I joke with some of you and say, oops, I found something wrong with your audit. You have three more credits to complete. <laughs> No, it's because we, we never want to let you go. You have been so special and so wonderful to us. I want to welcome your family, your friends, significant persons in your life. Welcome to the celebration. It's a very, very important occasion. And you know that these men and women who are here today could not have accomplished what they have without your support and your love. So I thank you for all the encouragement you've provided them. And I hope that you're going to be as impressed and as wowed by their accomplishments as we are. And we are going to be telling you about them in just a few moments. Each of these graduates has taken, I would say, the first steps in a remarkable journey that they're going to continue on. They have fulfilled the requirements of their majors, some of them have fulfilled the requirements of two majors and a minor. They have fulfilled the requirements of the Honors College. They have completed senior theses. They have conducted research, participated in internships. They've been on study abroad experiences. They've engaged in community activities. They have, in every possible way, pushed themselves to do more than is, I think, humanly possible. They inspire us, we who teach them, never to ever feel fatigued, because we look at them and we think, well, how do they do it? Surely we have to do the same. These young women and men, you will be surprised. Many of them are already working. I just heard um, one of our graduates say that he's been bringing home a paycheck since January. And he jokingly said, and of course my family takes it all. <laughs> but no, these are amazing, amazing people. Some of them are going on to graduate school, and we'll be telling you about that as well. But these are the first steps in a lifelong journey. And as they have been enriching themselves here at UMass Boston, they've also been thinking about the ways in which they can contribute to this world. As you heard one of our faculty members say, Professor Pacey Foster, that there is so much for our graduates to be contributing to and helping to address. So many problems, so many challenges, so many opportunities right next door, nationally and globally. And we know that each of these students is going to leave her or his mark in some meaningful way upon the kinds of things that they encounter. So this is the start of a great afternoon, and I want you to revel in every moment of it. And thank you so much for being here. It is now my great pleasure and great honor to introduce the Chancellor of UMass Boston, Dr. J. Keith Motley. Dr. J. Keith Motley is the eighth chancellor of the University of Massachusetts, Boston. And you know, under his leadership, student enrollment has grown, faculty research awards have increased, and look at all the beautiful buildings we have. Dr. Motley has dreamed big for this campus. And he does not know how meaningful that is to all of us who work here, and those of you who have been to school here. He has left behind for us a legacy that we're going to be proud of. Dr. Mockley championed that the Honors Program become an Honors College, and thank you so much for that, Dr. Mockley. <laughs> Dr. 
His heart is full of love for all of you. I know you know that, because he always says that. And I know he's gonna carry that love with him wherever he goes. Dr. Mongley has had more than 20 years of experience in higher education administration, including nearly a decade of service leading UMass Boston. Before becoming our chancellor in 2007, Chancellor Mongley served as vice president for business, marketing, and public affairs at the University of Massachusetts President's Office. And he was the interim chancellor and vice chancellor for student affairs at UMass Boston before 2007. Dr. Motley holds a very special place for me, and I want to take this opportunity to thank him, and I want to let him know that I'm always here for him. Thank you, Dr. Motley. So, um, good afternoon, everybody. I hope you are as excited as I am about the next few days. Uh, starting with right now, first of all, stand up, students. If you're here and you're ready to graduate, stand up so I can see you. Give me a round of applause. Have a seat. <laughs> hey, listen, I'm only going to be able to boss you around for a little while longer because you become colleagues and part of this incredible ecosystem that reaches out from the University of Massachusetts Boston to the world in ways that are just so fascinating for all of us. We are so proud of you. You know, you can tell when somebody loves you. When um, Dean Shrinkoff comes up here, she talks about almost 20 years. She starts talking about your life in 20s and instead of 30s and all that kind of stuff. That's an amazing thing. Thank you. I'm proud of the years that I've served you in higher education. I'm also so proud of the years that we've had together here at this university. This university is an incredible space, and it's incredible because of each and every one of you. Parents and students and friends and faculty and colleagues around this room, you've made the difference. And so as we're here at an honors college, understand how important that is to our growth and development as an institution. I remember coming to one of these and we were in a little room somewhere downstairs trying to do a ceremony. Now we walk in here and we're filling up the ballroom. What an amazing, amazing accomplishment. And that's because of each and every one of YOU in this room. And I owe you a lot for that. I owe you a lot for, you know, you can have all the vision you want in the world, but if you don't have colleagues who believe in that vision and or implement it, and then as chancellors, we run around and we, we all tend to have huge mouths. So we can talk about anything, you know, from the bluebirds that I just saw in my backyard earlier this morning to whatever it is that we need to talk about. So being able to brag about you, you've given me so much to be proud of and to share everywhere. So congratulations to you. Let me just take a moment, as I've said thank you, to emphasize the honors portion of the Honors College. You know that signifies the diligence and all of the extra commitment on your part. When we brought you in, some of you on that Friday night before the other open houses, and we said, hey, it's going to take a little bit. We didn't tell you how much. But once you got here and you bought into that rigor, and you understood that there were no limits to your capacity to learn and to share, because you shared with us along the way. What an amazing, amazing thing. And so we are so proud that you are leading the way as a, um, just a community of student leaders. Every single one of you. You've exemplified what it means to give back, and in doing so, you've helped represent yourselves in this university in a way that makes every single one of us proud. If you are here today supporting these um, graduates, know that you have done an incredible job. And we're so proud to have you as part of this 
family as well. Thank you. Thank you for your gift of them to us and for allowing us to help prepare them because you've helped prepare them as well. This university has had an honors program for more than two decades, so I don't want you to think that you are it. Now, you're all that. <laughs> but you are part of that journey. We dreamed about you 20 years ago, and we've been building towards you ever since. We didn't know how fascinating you would be. We didn't know how incredible you'd be. We sort of imagined that. But when you become a reality for us, it just messes us up. It just hits us in our soul. So thank you for that. Because that's why you see us walking around with our heads held so high. <sighs> and that's why as Chancellor, I can walk around with my head held so high. Because you have helped keep it that way. And to all my colleagues who sit in these rows and in the back of this room, they understand that. And so what a precious gift of your lives to us for those moments. It pushes us to be the best that we can be. Always remember who we represent in those kinds of things. So to learn the way you've learned, to be engaged by your faculty in the way that you were engaged, to be engaged by your peers, some of you were used to just being the one. I'm that all that person in my classroom. You came to a place where everybody was kind of all that. <laughs> and it pushed you in ways that were healthy for you. I get to enjoy that every day with the colleagues that I have. They push you beyond what you thought was the boundary that you might have set for yourself into a new threshold of understanding and learning. And that's why I love to be with them and we love to be with you. And so thank you, thank you students and faculty and staff. Thank you alumni who returned to help us celebrate. Thank you to our new graduates for the lessons you will take into the world. I especially like to thank our provost. Winston Langley drove me crazy around this notion of the Honors College. Mm -hmm. And we fought through our governing body who assumed that there should only be one Honors College within this system. Because we knew that this capital city deserved that. To our dean, Roger E. Shrinkoff, who's been just incredible. Michael, who I've known since he was you, coming out of high school, has been, came back to us after obtaining a master's degree. Now one of my students in the doctoral classes, because I've taught for the 14 years I've been here. And so I'm so grateful to him and this team and for all the inspiring leadership. We honor all of your commitment and your acknowledge to be acknowledged today but we, that we would not be here without them and you and our faculty and every single one of those who's here in this room. And so graduates, relish this moment, relish this entire afternoon. We're all here for you. As many songs say, this is your time to shine. This week is your time to shine. The honors event that you're a part of is just a small part of that. I'm gonna see some of you on Thursday. I'm going to see some of you on Friday at commencement. But whenever I see you, let's have an incredible time. When we were founded a little more than 50 years ago, we were dreaming of you. Among the many things that we we're talking about when we were dreaming of you was your excellence. This institution has never turned its back on this city. You've helped us become better citizens because of your scholarship and your contribution to this great capital city. You've demonstrated a willingness to learn and be led by the best. As you move on with your lives, we want you to do as your dean says. We want you to breathe. 
And then she falls. <laughs> That's what put her and what's put on pause. But that is important. If we can't tell you anything else, breathe and pause for a moment. Because it allows you to think. And sometimes in this great journey, we're moving so fast that we don't even take the time to use the gift that you use to get so far in your life, which is this. So breathe, pause, think. Do me that favor, and then do. Do the great things that you've been incredibly prepared to do. So it's in those kind of, um, in that light that you as beacons will go out into this world and begin to shine your light. We're proud of you. Continue to shine brightly as you forge forward together. I can't wait to celebrate with you. I can't wait to continue to welcome you into this community as we watch the incredible achievements that you have going forward. Congratulations. See you at commencement. I'll be ready. I hope you're going to be ready too. All right? All right. So enjoy yourself. I know you'll agree with me. It's always great to hear Chancellor Mobley talk. <laughs> Well, it is now my equally great pleasure to introduce Provost Langley, who is, um, as you know, our Chief Academic Officer. And he is the individual who sets the academic vision for this university. He dreams big for intellectual challenge, and he has succeeded in making this university something to be proud of, something to be reckoned with. Provost Langley is himself a really amazing scholar. He has had a wealth of training, a background in biology, and then doctoral training and a professoriate in political science and international relations. And then once he became a fully tenured professor, he went and got a law degree in human rights. So you can see the kind of eclectic training and vision he has, and he's also a poet and a literary critic. So he sets a mean standard for all Honors College students to emulate. Provost Langley, I welcome you here to share your wisdom with the graduates.
We are sad because you learn with us that there is no unified self, that your self is far more complex than a single unity, that the societies from which you came and the societies within which you will live are equally complex. The Taoist informed us that there is no single truth. And if indeed there were a single truth, it would be inevitable, inimical to our health, since we would be following a single path when our understanding of things us to embrace multiple paths. We'll miss you because we have learned with you that exclusions are a source of many, many miseries for human beings, be they based on language or religion, or nationality, or gender, or ethnicity, etc. And that the better way of approaching things is to be inclusive. We are sad because you are leaving us at a time when we're increasingly concerned about the care of our common home. You notice the president was in Rome yesterday meeting with the Pope. And you remember his encyclical that sought to focus with an emphasis on the environment, our common home, the planet. We know that all of human flourishing in which you are implicated, I am implicated, your parents, your relatives, your friends are implicated, dependent on that care. We're sad because this public university. I share with you and you with us the nobility of public service. That if we're going to care for our common good, public service is that which can pop It doesn't mean that one, of course, has to work in government, local, national, or local. But in wherever the passionate engagement that has been spoken of may be, it is not geared solely for self fulfillment, but that it be shared generally. We miss you because you brought with you the attention of your parents and your friends and your loved ones, well wishers, and that we run the risk of losing all of them when you leave us.
you would take with you and use it for the common human flourishing. Allow me, therefore, to congratulate you on all of those well wishes, on all of the parents, on all of the friends, and that you will go and do well, and that the sadness in your leaving will generate gladness in your achievement. Thank you. examine a range of fields and in the testimony of their honors faculty members um, these students or this student has emerged as a model of intellectual curiosity and sophistication and exhibited a passion for learning so this year's winner of the robert spakeling award is zara khan
Thank you to Mike Metzger for helping me develop as a leader on this campus during the very beginning of my career here at UMass. Thank you to Jason Rush for all that he does for the Honors College. If it weren't for you, I don't think I would have made it to the UMass Amherst Conference on time and on the right day. <laughs> so thank you. Um, a big thank you to Megan Rokoff for putting up with me no matter what. And um, she was there for me during the winter break, even if we were about to get hit with a snowstorm the very next day, or in the middle of the summer when she could have been enjoying her time out in the sun. She was there for me and has been committed to my success from the very start, so thank you. I would also like to thank all of the Honors, Honors College scholars sitting before me. I have had the privilege to have gotten to know many of you during my time here at UMass, so thank you for making these past four years very memorable for me. And finally, I'd like to thank my mom. I have never met such a strong, hardworking, and thoughtful woman in my entire life. She was always there by my side, especially after every organic chemistry exam when I bawled my eyes out thinking I failed the exam. She has given me constant support, encouragement, and unconditional love. So thank you, Ami, this one's for you. Second Honors College Award is the Blair Moulton Travel Grant. Um, this award is named after a faculty member of the English Department, a former faculty member of the English Department, Professor Joel Blair, who when he graduated um, years ago uh, from his university in Texas, took a trip outside the United States and that trip transformed him. And he wanted to leave that same experience for a graduating senior. So his endowment has made possible this award that we give every year. Uh, we had 26 students apply for this award. They have to submit an essay, and we have a panel of reviewers read these essays anonymously. And the person who was selected to receive this award is Delena Dang. Uh, Delena. <laughs> It will add 
that is the piece. Thank you. Thank you. I want to thank one more group of people, the Honors College Ambassadors, where are you? Come forward, please. <laughs> Two of our ambassador ambassadors are graduating today, but we have three more, and really they run the place um, and keep us in line. So thank you very much for your for your efforts to make sure we're operating the Honors College as it should be. <laughs> and now before the individual recognition of our students, um, I have the distinct pleasure of conferring something important on all the graduates. So will all the candidates who are graduating today Rise, please, all of you. And it is now my pleasure and my honor to confer on you as Dean of the Honors College the title of Honors College Scholar. This title will appear on your diplomas and it will be an indication of your hard work. And you have all the rights and privileges and responsibilities of carrying this title. May you bring your knowledge and your skills to the areas that need it most. Congratulations. So we're now going to be sort of beginning the individual recognitions, and this is how it will proceed, because we have a lot of students uh, who are graduating today. I want to say there are about 70, give or take a few, I can't remember the exact number. And so this is how it works. We will call up students by group, so we will sort of read out maybe six or seven names at a time. When you hear your name, please come and stand on that line to do the other side. Sorry, so there you go. <laughs> you come to where Kelly is standing and stand on that line over there. And then when your individual name is called, you step forward and stand on the triangle. Kelly is modeling for you. <laughs> and um, you will have wonderful things said about you. And you will smile. <laughs> and then once that's done, you walk across to the other side of the room, and you stand on the star, and you receive your investiture of the cords and the medal, and Harry takes a beautiful photograph of you, and then you return to your seat. <laughs> I do want to say one thing, that because there are lots of ceremonies that are taking place on campus today, there might be a bit of, you know, people might be going in and out. Um, there are many departments and colleges that are also celebrating, so please don't be alarmed if you see a lot of movement going on. And if I may request you, thank you so much for coming, Chancellor. <laughs> I know it's going to be really hard to hold your applause when we read all the wonderful things that these graduates have done, but if we could request you to hold your applause until the end of the ceremony, that would be super. So that's just a special request. Um, and now let me turn it over the podium to Mike, who is going to be um, the first person who is going to start calling games. How about a round of applause for our senior ambassador, Kelly, who just apparently graduated. So I'd like to begin with our first group, and in this first group, as I call your name, please come forward and stand next to Kelly on that black line. We have Alyssa Beneflu, Scott Brower, Jake Galler, Shubankar Joshi, Daniel Kramer, and Christine Lafort. 
If I've called your name, please come forward and stand on the black line. First up for honoring, we have Alyssa Bethel. Alyssa graduates with a degree in philosophy and public policy. She presented her senior thesis, Healthcare as a Human Right, the Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act at the statewide undergrad research conference at UMass Amherst. She completed an undergrad research portfolio and has been a very active member of our campus community, completing a beacon voyages for service trip to Detroit, serving in multiple branches of student government, working three years in new student programs, mentoring for CLA First and CLA Sophomore, was a member of the Black Student Center and Casa Latina, interned for the Edward M. Kennedy Institute. In the fall, she'll be attending Northeastern University for a master's in public health. Congratulations. Scott Brower. Scott graduates with a philosophy and psychology double major. His senior thesis is titled Determining Member Satisfaction, Evaluating Member Self-Reported Satisfaction with the TOB Clubhouse. His campus involvement included serving as a CLA First Mentor, Freshman Welcome Day Speaker and Ambassador, Freshman Leadership Institute, CLA First, and CLA Sophomore Program. He completed an internship with Bay Cover Human Services. Post-graduation, he seeks to enroll in a graduate school for a PsyD and travel wherever he can. Congratulations. Jake Geller. Jake graduates with a degree in psychology. He presented his senior thesis, Critiques on Dichotomy and Category on Campus. He is a member of the Sai Chai International Honor Society. He is also active in the Neuroscience Club, was a peer mentor for an Honors College first year seminar, was a research assistant for the UMass Boston Baby Lab. During his years at UMass Boston, he was also the head eighth grade lacrosse coach for Marshfield Youth Lacrosse and a mental health associate at Pembroke Hospital. In the near future, he hopes to obtain a PhD in clinical psychology and finish his independent research on several topics, including, in his spare time, space-time symmetry. Congratulations, Jake. <laughs> Shubi Joshi. I met Shubi and his family in 2013. At that meeting, I knew there was something special about Shubi, and the past four years has proved it at every turn. He is a strong leader and has a vibrant ethic of care for this community. He is a recipient of the Michael Ventresca 1969 Student Leadership Award, participated in the Freshman Leadership Institute, was president of Alpha Lambda Delta and Golden Key, is an officer in Phi D Epsilon, could sometimes be found balling for intramural basketball, there it is, volunteered for numerous Boston organizations, and was an Honors College Community Ambassador. He graduates with a degree in biochemistry. After graduation, he plans to dive into the healthcare field and help those in his fellow Massachusetts community. I have no doubt he will go forward as he has bettered so many lives here, including mine. Congratulations. <laughs> Dan Kramer. I got to know Dan as one of the founders and subsequent presidents of the Honor Student Union, the HSU, which is the backbone of the Honor College's social community. He graduates as a nursing major. His thesis title is Non-Pharmacological Anxiety Management in Acute Healthcare Settings, colon, a therapeutic approach. There's always a colon in these, isn't there, Dan? Mm -hmm. sure. Yeah, there is, yeah. He is a member of the Sigma Theta Tau International Nursing Honor Society, is the nursing cohort vice president. He served as a clinical tech at MGH and PCA Spalding, Cambridge. And Dan, after the barbecues that we've thrown for HSU, there's always a burger ready for you. Congratulations. <laughs> Christine Laforte. Christine graduates as a double major in anthropology and biology. Her senior thesis is titled Modern Sociocultural Theories on Poverty and Homelessness. She participated in Strong Women, Strong Girls. She volunteered at Rosie's Place and was a student in the 2016 edition of the Becoming a Leader class. After graduation, she plans to travel, intern at a hospital, and attend medical school. Congratulations, Christine. <laughs> Nick.
My next group consists of, if I call your name, please come down, Mul Martin Mulcair, Christine Nuka, Ashley Pierre Lewis, Rachel Roberts Toller, and Mark Torres. If I've called your name, please come down. We'll begin with Martin. Martin Mulcairy graduates as a political science major and an international relations minor. His senior thesis title is 77,000, a discussion about polling during the 2016 general election and the effects it may have for American democracy in the future. He was awarded a departmental distinction award by the Department of Political Science. He participated in a conflict transformation across borders study abroad in Ecuador and interned for Congressional Representative Joe Kennedy as well as Liberty Square's groups, the Blue Lab. He's headed off to the world of work and then graduate school. Congratulations, Mark. Christine Newcomb. Christine graduates as a management major with a communication studies minor. She presented her thesis, Women in Leadership, at the MSURC conference. She was a peer leader, member of an actus, a CVP Career Academy participant, an event operations intern for the Massachusetts Convention Center Authority, a booking intern for the Authority, a marketing assistant for the Boston Convention Marketing Center. She was also a student in the 2016 edition of the Becoming a Leader class and spoke at the 2017 Scholarship Awards Dinner. After graduation, she plans to get her real estate license and find the right graduate program for her and her goals. I've known Christine now for several years in her family, and so it's a great pride to say congratulations. Ashley Pierre Lewis. Ashley graduates as a political science major with a public policy minor. Her senior thesis title is Resurgence in the City of Champions, the Effects of Urban Development Policy on Lower Class Mobility in Brockton, Massachusetts, which she presented at the Undergraduate Research Conference at UMass Amherst and the UMass Boston CLA Research Conference. Ashley is a recipient of the Roger Feinstein Award from the Political Science Department. She's done a Beacon Voyages for Service, which was also inducted into Alpha Lambda Delta. She completed the Freshman Leadership Institute. She was a coordinator of SAEC, served as an intern for U.S. Senator Elizabeth Warren. In the fall, she'll be attending Tufts University's Master's Program for Urban and Environmental Planning. Congratulations. <laughs> Rachel Roberts Toller. Rachel graduates as a double major in economics and environmental science. Her senior thesis title is Understanding Social Vulnerability Through Indicators, which she presented at the School for the Environment Colloquium. She's received an academic leadership award for an Honors 290 seminar, the Stewart Award for Outstanding Female Graduate in Economics. She was also a National Park Service Cultural Resource Intern and a National Science Foundation Fellow at UMass Amherst. I had the privilege of meeting Rachel as a high school senior. From our first encounter throughout her years at UMass Boston, she's demonstrated great educational tenacity. She now leaves UMass Boston to start a career in environmental management as a resource, at a resource management company in Boston. Congratulations. Mark Torres. Mark graduates as a psychology major. His senior thesis title is Stereotype Threat Experienced in Higher Education, Exploring Impacts on the Educational Outcomes. He earned an honorable graduate award from the Brigham and Women's Hospital. On campus, he served in student government, is a member of the Phi Delta Epsilon and Psi Chi Societies. He completed the Freshman Leadership Institute and studied abroad in Germany. He has served as an anesthesia technician at the Center and at the Center for Clinical Investigation as an intern at the Brigham and Women's Hospital. Also, he served as an operations associate at Mass General Hospital. He volunteered at the Perkins School for the Blind and participated in the 2016 Becoming a Leader class. After graduation, he plans to attend an industrial organization graduate school leading to a PhD. Congratulations, Mark. students I have the privilege of introducing to you all. Now I believe I'm going to call to the podium Megan. No. 
Jason, thank you. <laughs> uh, before I introduce my honors college advisees who are graduating today uh, at the honors ceremony and then on Friday at commencement, I just wanted to take a moment to say what a pleasure it's been to work with all of you as an honors college advisor. As honors advisors, we truly see firsthand just how dedicated our students are, and I've been really impressed by all of your hard work and accomplishments throughout your time here at UMass Boston. It's been my honor to work with you as an honors college advisor over these past few years, so I'm proud to celebrate your achievements with you here today, and I wish you all the very best as you continue on to your future endeavors. So, the people I'll be calling up are Lauren Anderson, Manuel Castro, Pauline Cruz, James Flynn, Ahmad Hassaba, Abdul Ismail, Laura Keegan, and Mariana Lakola. I have another list after these are read. So if I didn't call your name and your mind rights, you're coming up. Okay, Lauren Anderson is an environmental science major with marine science concentration. Her senior honors thesis, No Impact, No Way, The Aspirational Challenge of Characterizing No Impact in Marine Protected Areas, was advised by Professor John Duff. Last month, she presented her thesis at the Massachusetts Statewide Undergraduate Research Conference at UMass Amherst. Laura was also the Honors College's 2017 nominee for 29 Who Shine in Massachusetts Higher Education. She volunteered at New England Aquarium and works at the Apple Store in Boston and got me a discount on my recent iPod purchase. <laughs> She plans to apply to master's programs in urban planning or sustainable tourism. Congratulations, Lauren. Okay, I don't think Manny Castro's here, right? Okay. Next is Pauline Cruz. Pauline graduates as a nursing major from the College of Nursing and Health Sciences. Her senior thesis on music therapy and oncologic pain and anxiety was advised by nursing program chair, Dr. Rosanna DeMarco. Pauline presented her thesis at Nursing Research Day here at UMass Boston. On campus, she also participated in such activities as Honor Student Union and our UMass Boston Service Day. Pauline currently works as a certified nursing assistant, and after her graduation from UMass Boston, she plans to apply to graduate school programs in nursing. Congratulations, Pauline. James Flynn is an English major, and he's completed his undergraduate degree in just three years, which is very impressive. His senior honors thesis is titled Racial Roots of Romanticism, American and European Africanism, or the Creation of Biopolitics. And his thesis advisor was Professor Elizabeth Fay in the Department of English. James presented his thesis last month at the Massachusetts Statewide Undergraduate Research Conference at UMass Amherst, as well as at the National Conference of Undergraduate Research in Memphis. After graduation, he plans to apply to law school. Congratulations, James. <laughs> Next is Ahmad Hassaba, who goes by Ed. Ed graduates with a major in biology. His senior thesis on protein hormone transcripts as nested information systems was advised by Dr. Kenneth Campbell in the Department of Biology. Ed co-presented his honors thesis with fellow researchers last month at the Massachusetts Statewide Undergraduate Research Conference at UMass Amherst and was also president of the Honor Student Union during the 2015-2016 academic year. After graduating from UMass Boston, he plans to attend medical school. Congratulations, Ed. <laughs> Next is Abdul Ismail, who's an information technology major with a concentration in systems administration. His senior honors thesis was a two-part information technology capstone project an Apache 2 web server and an access database for survey research. Abdul was also a recipient of UMass Boston's prestigious Charles J. Hoff Scholarship for Leadership. He currently works as a quality assurance engineer at Iconics, and after graduating from UMass Boston, Abdul will begin graduate school in fall 2017 to earn his master's degree in healthcare informatics at Northeastern University. Congratulations, Abdul. Sorry, Laura's next, and then Lacola. <laughs> Thank you, and Laura Keegan. Laura Keegan is a psychology major with a minor in cognitive science. Her senior honors thesis, The Effective familiar Familiarity on Visual Search Performance of Two-Year-Old Toddlers with and without Autism Spectrum Disorder, was advised by Dr. Caldy in the Department of Psychology. 
Lara presented her thesis last month at the Massachusetts Statewide Undergraduate Research Conference at UMass Amherst. In fall 2015, she studied abroad at the University of Sussex in Brighton, England. Lara works as a lead educator at the Museum of Science in Boston, and after graduation, she plans to work in clinical research and apply to PhD programs in cytology. Congratulations, Lara. And finally, in this first group, Mariana Lacola, who is also a psychology major. Mari's senior thesis, The Intergenerational Transmission of Trauma, Parental Behaviors, Mental Health Outcomes, and Protective Factors, was advised by Professor Abby Eisenhower in the psychology department. Mari worked for two semesters in the ABCD lab on campus, and she also worked as a volunteer for the MSPCA. Mari is the recipient of the Adrian Jill Barnett Memorial Prize in Psychology. After graduation, she plans to do clinical work and continue on to become a physician's assistant. Congratulations, Mari. Okay, in the second half of my list alphabetically, please come up when I call your name. Uh, Nina Lang, Sarah Enzacoba, Marilyn Pineda, Jenna Pope, Teresa Rosito, Casey Tevis, and Stella Jai. Thank you, Nina. It's finding my right page. There we go. Nina Lang, who goes by Nina, graduates from the College of Management with a concentration in accounting and finance. Her senior honors thesis, Opportunity Financial Reporting and Analysis of Meeting or Beating Earning Firms versus Consistent Earning Increase Firms, was advised by Professor of Accounting Sang Wan Kim. Nina presented her thesis last month at the Massachusetts Statewide Undergraduate Research Conference at UMass Amherst. Um, and Nina has also worked as an, intern, as an intern in the State Street Scholars Program, and after graduation, she plans to work as a certified public accountant. Congratulations, Nina. Sarah Enzacoba is a chemistry major whose senior thesis towards the structural character